Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. And today's topic is uh, sub arytenoid hemorrhage. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to subscribe this channel for more videos every day. You know. And the subscribe button is just below this video in the description area. Now I come to a topic sub arsenoid hemorrhage, which is also known as SAH. What is it? You know, it refers to the bleeding within the sub arsenoid space, which is the area between the brain and the tissues that cover the brain, you know. And the sub arsenoid space is uh, the space where the cerebrospinal fluid circulates you know, and uh, it's responsible for protecting your brain from injury by serving uh, as a cushion and uh, the hemorrhage in this space can cause coma it can cause par paralysis and it can cause death you know and uh, it's a very serious medical condition you know and this uh, condition can occur quickly and is often the result of like uh, any accidental injury or trauma you know and uh, the key to uh, survival is immediate medical intervention you know and they should call the doctor uh, or the emergency services in fact you know uh, as soon as possible if you are someone else uh, uh, you know or around you you know has the symptoms of uh, uh, this condition you know and this is a life threatening condition uh, and it's also rare as well, you know, and uh, it counts between 0.01 to 0.08 percent of the visits to the emergency room. So it's uh, very rare, you know. The next thing is, what are the symptoms? Well, when this condition develops, you know, due to any trauma or injury, you know, uh, it's uh, it has several symptoms, and the main symptom is a sudden and a severe headache, which is the uh, more intense at the base of the skull you know and it's often described as the worst headache people have ever experienced you know and uh, some people may feel like popping sensations in uh, their head before the hammer begins you know and uh, uh, other pain through like the neck pain or maybe the numbness throughout the body you know or maybe the shoulder pain or seizures or maybe confusion and irritability sensation sensitivity to the light you know and uh, double vision uh, maybe decreased vision you know and uh, a rapid loss of uh, alertness you know so these are the common symptoms you know and the symptoms of the uh, subarsenoid uh, uh, hemorrhage uh, come on suddenly you know and uh, you may lose, uh, lose uh, like uh, uh, consciousness quickly uh, and uh, you should seek emergency uh, attention right away if you experienced any of these symptoms combined with the severe headache, you know. So this is a warning sign, you know, so you should uh, not wait, don't waste time and call them, you know, so straight away, you know. The next thing is what are the causes? Well, you know, it can occur spontaneously as a result of the head trauma, you know. And the spontaneous uh, uh, subarachnoid uh, uh, hemorrhage is... Uh, it's often related to the brain aneurysm, you know, so which means that uh, these are the abnormalities within the brain's arteries, you know. And the most common cause of the primary uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is uh, brain aneurysm. And uh, it's called a, like a berry aneurysm because uh, uh, it, uh, it forms a cluster of sac-like pouches, you know, uh, in the cerebral vessel that... Uh, looks like cluster of berries you know and uh, these aneurysms uh, swell up and weaken the walls of the arteries over the time you know and when the aneurysm erupts it quickly bleeds and forms a clot and uh, this condition is responsible for the uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage cases you know and uh, uh, aneurysmal hemorrhage may occur at any age but it is most common between the age of 40 to 65 and the brain aneurysms are uh, more common in women, uh, in smokers, and uh, those who has the high blood pressure. You know. 
and in some cases the trauma to the brain uh, during an injury can cause the aneurysm and results in uh, uh, this condition you know and uh, the other causes include like bleeding uh, from an uh, like uh, anterovenous uh, malformations known as AVMs you know or maybe the bleeding disorders or maybe a use of blood thinners you know and a serious hand injury uh, such as uh, that occurs during a car crash or uh, any other falls you know that hits the head you know uh, can lead to the subordinate hemorrhage so these are the common causes you know now it can occur at any age and some people are even born with the cerebral uh, kind of aneurysm you know and that can lead to this condition and uh, you know the women are more likely than the men to develop the brain aneurysm and uh, eventually then the uh, subordinate hemorrhage you know and the smoking and the high blood pressure as the other risk factor which play an important role in the development of this condition you know and drugs use particularly like uh, cocaine etc you know they dramatically increase uh, the risk of uh, not only developing the aneurysm but also having the uh, like uh, subordinate hemorrhage you know so these are the risk factors and one in 50 people uh, is esti like estimated to have an uh, unruptured aneurysm and uh, you should talk to your doctor if you have any history of the brain aneurysm you know and if you have the aneurysms it's important to see the doctor regularly to determine your risk of hemorrhaging you know before it develops so it's very important uh, that uh, you uh, see the doctor uh, you know then regular basis you know now the next thing is how do doctors diagnose that and uh, this condition you know you know it's often uh, detected during a physical examination and uh, your doctor may notice that uh, you have a stiff neck and vein problems you know and the history of the sudden worst headache of uh, your life also makes uh, uh, this uh, more likely you know and this combination often leads to the diagnosis of uh, a subordinate hemorrhage you know and uh, you will need more testing to find out the severity of the hemorrhage so that uh, you can get the proper treatment you know and first your doctor will conduct the ct scan of your head to look for the bleeding in your skull you know and uh, if the results are uh, inclusive you know then the doctor may contrast uh, uh, use a contrast dye during the procedure you know and uh, other tests may include like mri scan or maybe the uh, like uh, cerebral angiography you know or the transcranial ultrasound and uh, uh, lumbar puncture test you know where the doctor will take the fluid from the lumbar spine to check under the microscope you know and this condition is often misdiagnosed uh, the reason is because seven, uh, 73% percent of the people don't get scans you know and the treatment depends uh, you know it's very important that you get the rapid treatment you know uh, to save the life and reduce the possibility and the extent of the brain damage you know so uh, bleeding and the pressure may build up in the brain leading to the coma and the additional brain hemorrhage you know? and this pressure needs to be uh, alleviated by the medications uh, are a procedure to drain some of the cerebrospinal fluid to decrease the pressure you know and uh, uh, the second the cause of the bleeding needs to be identified and treated as soon as possible as a new bleeding uh, from the same aneurysm can frequently occur without treatment you know so the surgery is performed to clip or to close the aneurysm and stop the future bleeding you know and if your aneurysm is being clipped you know uh, then uh, uh, which is a uh, known as craniectomy you know uh, is performed and the aneurysm is closed you know uh, you know a craniectomy involves the opening the skull to expose the area of involvement you know and uh, a technique called uh, endovascular coiling may also be used to reduce the risk of uh, future bleeding you know and uh, uh, if uh, it causes the coma you know the treatment will include like uh, appropriate to life support with artificial ventilation and protection of the airways and the placement of the drainage tube in the brain to relieve the uh, cerebrospinal pressure you know and if you don't lose consciousness then uh, uh, from this condition then you will be given the like strict instructions to prevent the post treatment uh, coma you know 
and the bed rest is the standard for people relieving from this condition and your doctor will also ask you to refrain from like uh, straining your body or uh, bending over you know and these actions can increase uh, uh, the pressure on your brain you know and uh, you often may prescribe the, like regular uh, medications to control the blood pressure with the medications through the orally or maybe uh, uh, preferably uh, intravenously you know and uh, prevent the uh, artery spasm in with the, like uh, nemodipine you know and uh, relieve the severe headaches with the painkillers and the anxiety medications you know uh, you know even after the treatment you know uh, you may be at risk of uh, uh, related comp uh, like complications you know and the most common complication is called repeated bleeding and this happens when a rupture uh, that has healed itself or it ruptures again you know and the repeated bleeding can increase your risk of death and the uh, commas due to this condition can also eventually lead to the death you know and in some cases the people may experience seizures or strokes followed by the treatment you know and the only way to prevent this condition is uh, uh, to identify the potential problems you know within the brain and uh, early detection in some cases uh, and the treatment after the brain aneurysm can prevent it, like subsequent hemorrhage you know in uh, uh, that area you know uh, well the outlook you know this is a serious condition and uh, uh, many times most of the time it's fatal you know and the recovery periods uh, uh, recovery is very long you know and you may be at the high risk of the complication if you are older or if uh, your general health is not that good, you know. And uh, uh, the outlook also depends on how quickly you reach to the emergency room, you know. And uh, uh, by the, like, uh, by quick medical intervention, you know, uh, life can be saved. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease and any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.